I'm Miss Jenny from the Wooddale Public Library and we're going to do some Halloween not so scary stories. My very favorite Halloween story is Big Pumpkin by Erica Silverman. And I'm going to tell this story instead of just reading it. And it's one of our very favorite here at the Wooddale Public Library. And the story starts with a little witch who ordered some pumpkin seeds from a catalog because she wanted some pumpkin pie. So she went outside and she planted the pumpkin seeds. And after a while, bink, a sprout poked through. And then a pumpkin grew and it grew and it grew and then it grew some more. Here it is. Soon. Halloween was just hours away. So the witch bent down to take the pumpkin off the vine. Can you help me out with that? Can you go ahead and grab that pumpkin vine? All right, here she goes. First she pulled, uh, then she tugged, uh, uh, then she pulled, uh, and then she got serious. And she pulled hard. Rat, the witch said, as that pumpkin just sat. Just then, along came a ghost. Big pumpkin, said the ghost. Oh, it's big and it's mine, but it's stuck on the vine, said the witch. And Halloween is just hours away. And you know what she did? She kick that pumpkin. Well, the ghost said, I am bigger than you and stronger too. Why don't you let me try? Ooh, can we make ghost muscles? Nice big muscles and go, ooh, nice, good job. Well, the witch went, huh. can you do that with your nose up in the air? Huh. But she thought about pumpkin pie. And she stepped aside and she let the ghost try. Can we help the ghost out? All right, grab that pumpkin vine. First, the ghost pulled, uh, and then he tugged, uh, uh, and then he got serious and he pulled hard. Ready? Uh, uh, oh, trat, said the ghost, as that pumpkin just sat. Just then, along came a, ooh, what is he? A vampire, you were right. And you know, they have those big teeth. So when he came, he said, big pumpkin. And the witch said, oh, it's big and it's mine, but it's stuck on the vine and Halloween is just hours away. And you know what she did? She uh, kicked that pumpkin. Then I am bigger than both of you, the vampire said, and stronger too. Can we do vampire muscles? You have to show your teeth when you do it. Ready? Go. <sighs> nice. Why don't you let me try? And the witch went, ha! with her nose in the air. Can you do that? Nice. And the ghost went, ha! Can you do that one? Nice. But they thought about pumpkin pie and they stepped aside and they let the vampire try. So the vampire reached down to take that pumpkin off the vine. Can you get a good hold on it? Help him out. First he pulled, uh, and then he tugged, uh, uh, and then he got serious, and he pulled hard. Uh, uh, that, the vampire said, as that pumpkin just sat. Oof. Just then, along came a mummy. Well, and you know, mummies have that stuff wrapped all around them. So they kind of sound like that. Yeah. So he, when the mummy came up, the mummy said, 
big pumpkin. And the witch said, oh, it's big and it's mine, but it's stuck on the vine and Halloween is just hours away. And the mummy said, hey, I'm bigger than all of you and stronger too. Oh, can we make mummy muscles? Mummy's kind of grown. Give me, give us a good, oh, nice. And the witch just, well, the mummy said, I'm bigger than all of you. Why don't you let me try? And the witch with her nose in the air, can you do them all? Here we go. The witch went, ha! And the ghost went, ha! And the vampire with his teeth went, ha! But they thought about pumpkin pie, and they stepped aside, and they let the mummy try. So the mummy reached down to take that pumpkin off the vine and she was very serious about it she had both of her feet up on the pumpkin she pulled you ready uh, and then she tugged uh, uh, and then she got serious and she pulled hard drat drat the mummy said as that pumpkin just sat oh nobody was able to get the pumpkin off the vine just then, along came a little bat. The witch didn't even go into her whole speech about it being her pumpkin. She just looked at the ghost. And the ghost looked at the vampire. Oh, and the vampire looked at the mummy. And they all started to laugh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and was that very nice? No, it was not. The bat just said, you know what? The bat was very brave. The bat just said, you know what? I may not be big and I may not be strong, but I have an idea. And the witch went, ha! And the ghost went, hum. And the vampire with his teeth went, ha! And the mummy went, ha! But they thought about pumpkin pie and they listened. And this was the bat's idea. First, the witch reached down to take the pumpkin off the vine. Whoops. Then the ghost grabbed the witch. The vampire grabbed the ghost. The mommy grabbed the vampire, and way in the back, the bat grabbed the mummy. And all together, as a team, first they pulled, uh, and then they tugged, uh, 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 and then they got serious, and they pulled hard, uh, uh, and snap that pumpkin flew off the vine. It landed at the top of the hill and it went rolling down the hill with a thump bump 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 until splat it landed right in front of the witch's house. Hooray for bat said the witch and she went inside to make pumpkin pie. Now, when they all got inside and the pumpkin pie was made and the house was decorated for a Halloween party, the ghost said, fun party. The mummy said, we'll have another bite. The vampire said, oh, I couldn't eat another bite. No, not me. And the little bat, uh-oh, said, I think it's time to go. Do you ever feel sad at the end of a party? When it's time to go, the witch did too. The witch just said drat as all of her new friends left at the end of the pumpkin pie party. But then she had an idea. She went back outside. She still had some pumpkin seeds. So she planted some more pumpkin seeds. Do you think they could have another pumpkin pie party? Maybe. All right, so we're gonna do a rhyme with five haunted houses. They were sitting on a street. The first house inside it, there was a witch 
who said, <laughs> wow, this is neat. In the second house, there was a ghost. And he said, Boo! that's what ghosts say. In the third house, there was a big pumpkin. Oh dear. He was made into a jack-o'-lantern. He looks a little sick. In the fourth house, there was a spider blocking the door. And he said, ah, Halloween is such a bore. I guess spiders aren't very scared of everything. And in that last house, the fifth house, it was dark and spooky. And even their treats were slimy and ooky. Oh, I'm not sure if I would want to go trick-or-treating at that house. What do you think? Okay, we have another story about some little ghosts. There were one, two, three, four, five brother and sister ghosts. And their mother took very good care of them. But one day she realized they were out of milk and vanilla ice cream, which is the only thing you can eat if you're a ghost and you want to stay spooky for Halloween. So she said to them, all right, I am going to go to the grocery store and I'm gonna get some more milk and some more vanilla ice cream. But whatever you do while I am gone, no matter how hungry you get, you have to remember not to eat anything or something dreadful will happen. Well, the problem was she was gone for quite a while. You know, it takes a while to get to the grocery store, to go shopping and pay everything and come back. And the little ghosts got very hungry. This little ghost thought, well, let's see what's in the fridge. And there was some grape juice in the fridge, just a little bit left at the bottom of the bottle. And he thought, that'll be fine. I should be fine. It'll be okay if I go ahead and eat, drink just a tiny little bit of grape juice so that I don't, you know, starve. So he did. He drank some grape juice. And oh dear, he turned into a little purple ghost. <gasps> he did not want his mother to see him being a purple ghost. It would be terrible, especially after she told him not to eat anything. So he ran upstairs and he hid in their ghost, in their toy, toy box. And now we only have how many ghosts left? One, two, three, four, only four left. Well, those four ghosts quickly got hungry too. In fact, this one was looking in the refrigerator and he saw something healthy to eat. He saw some yummy carrot st sticks and he thought, that's healthy. I should be able to eat those. It'll be fine. And he nibbled on one of the carrot sticks. But when he did, he turned, yep, you're right. He turned orange. <gasps> Mommy's going to be able to tell that I ate while she was gone. So he decided to run upstairs and hide in the closet. And that's exactly what he did. Now, we just, how many ghosts do we have left? One, two, three. That's right. The third little ghost, right, this one right here, was going to try for that whole healthy thing again. He looked in the refrigerator and he saw some spinach. He didn't even like spinach, so I don't know why he decided to have some, but he did. And as soon as he ate that spinach, oh, he turned green. Oh, he said, I can't let mommy find me. This is terrible. I'm going to be in so much trouble. So he ran upstairs and he hid under his bed. Now the small, this, this little ghost, we only have one, two left. This little ghost decided when she looked in the fridge that if she had just the tiniest, smallest little strawberry in the bowl, she would surely be fine. But as soon as she ate that tiny strawberry, she turned red. You were right. Oh, I'm gonna be in so much trouble. So she ran upstairs and hid behind the door in her bedroom. So we only have one little ghost left. He'd been so good for so long, but mom was still not back. 
Finally, he got so hungry, but he didn't want to get into the trouble that his brothers and sisters had gotten into. So he decided to look in the freezer to see if there wasn't maybe just a little bit of ice cream left somewhere. And he found a carton of ice cream and it just had a little bit in the corner. And it looked like vanilla, except maybe it had some little brown or black dots in it, but it would be fine. They were just tiny little things. So he ate some of that ice cream. Uh oh, it turned out it was chocolate chip ice cream. And he turned into a chocolate chip ghost. Oh my goodness. How could this be so wrong? He said, I, I can't let mother see me until this goes away. So he ran upstairs and he hid in the bathtub. Now, when mom came home, she was expecting to see all her little ghosts running around the house, having a good time, playing and being noisy. You know how kids are when mom's not around. But when she got home, the house was shh, completely silent. She looked in the living room, no little ghosts there. She looked in the kitchen, no little ghosts there. And she thought, oh dear, something has happened. So she went searching in the whole house and upstairs in the toy box, she found a purple little ghost. And in the closet, she found a little orange ghost. And under the bed, one of the beds, she found a green ghost. And when she closed the door, she found a red ghost. And last but not least, in the bathtub, she found that chocolate chip ghost. Oh my goodness, what have you done? She said. They said, Mommy, we were so hungry. We, we just had a little bit of food and look what happened. And their mother said, but what are you gonna do? Halloween is almost here. We just have a couple of weeks. Oh, she said, that's all right. I will call the ghost doctor. And when she called him, he said, oh my, you almost have enough time, maybe. You must put all of those little ghosts to bed and you must feed them only milk and vanilla ice cream. And they did, they went to bed for the whole week. And little by little, they turned back into white little ghosts. Just in time for Halloween. Oh my. Thank you for coming to the, for listening to the Woodell Library's Not So Scary Halloween Stories. We have lots of books here you can check out. The library is open. So you can come to the library and check out lots of Halloween books and lots of other books. And we would love to see you and you would get to see the brand new library. We hope to see you in the next few weeks. See you later. Happy Halloween.